Okay, so let me just try to illustrate a few things uh, using Spartan. So if you want to build a new molecule, let's go to File and New Build. And then it gives you a build uh, box here on the right. So just click whatever you want if you want a nitrogen or if you want a nitrogen that's got a double bond to it, right? Oxygen with a double bond, single bond, so forth. So we'll and then double click here. <clears throat> and then if we move over to the one of the yellow bonds and double click again, then now we've attached two carbons to each other. <clears throat> and if we want to attach an oxygen, then double click there. Now if I'm on a Mac, so if I click, if I hold down my trackpad and then with my finger, I can move it around that way. Or if I hold down the shift key, then I can translate around the z-axis. So I'm holding shift down and I'm holding the trackpad down and I'm moving with my finger. So I, the trackpad, I don't know how you do this on a Mac with the mouse. Or if I hold down the z-axis, uh, let's see. If I hold down the command act, command button and the trackpad with my one finger and then with the other finger I just use it to move, I can translate the molecule. And on the trackpad, if I, I can make it bigger and smaller just by right, um, taking two fingers and squeezing them together or moving them apart, I can make the molecule bigger or smaller. Okay, so if we take a simple molecule like that, so two carbon chain with an OH, and then if we go here to setup and calculations, <clears throat> Then you can change here, so if, if we just do energy and do a calculation, then it's not going to change the molecule at all. It's going to calculate the molecule exactly like it is. It's going to leave all of the bonds the same, bond lengths the same, bond angles the same, and so forth. Um, so if I do energy equilibrium geometry instead, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to tweak the molecule. It's going to shorten some bonds, lengthen some bonds, and... Um, change some bond angles until it finds the most stable structure. Um, so we'll look at other features later. Um, so we just give a lecture over confirmations. So we'll probably have you doing that before too long. For now we're going to keep equilibrium geometry because we're going to try to find the most stable structure for the molecule. You could change gas phase or you could put it in polar solvent or water. We'll just do these calculations in the gas phase. Uh, with so this is what are known as levels of theory. Uh, so MMF is a, a molecular mechanics calculation. So it's going to basically treat um, balls, atoms like balls or spheres, and it's going to treat bonds like springs, and then it's going to apply some things like um, Hooke's law from physics, the how difficult it is to stretch a bond and so forth. So basically, um, this. If you're choosing that level of theory, then there's a bunch of parameters built into the software, which is, you know it tells you a carbon-oxygen bond should be this long, a carbon-carbon bond should be this long, and all of that is built into the, param in the parameters of the calculation. So doing a molecular mechanics calculation, you can do really big molecules uh, because it's re using really low levels of calculations to figure out the optimal structure. If you do PM3, that's what's known as a semi-empirical level of theory. Uh, what this is going to do, it's going to do kind of a hybrid of molecular mechanics calculation, and it's going to in invoke some quantum mechanics. If you do Hartree-Fock uh, density functional theory, or MMP2, uh, then it's going to calculate the geometries and try to find the optimal geometry and structure of this molecule using quantum mechanics and that is much, much more intensive calculation. Uh, so you can only do small molecules if you get into these levels of theory uh, because the computation becomes so intense. Uh, if you have big molecules, then you, can, then you have to use these lower levels of theory. So for now, we'll just use molecular mechanics. Right? If, once you get into these levels of theory, then another box pops up and this allows you to do even more complex calculations. So we're not gonna mess with those for now. We'll just do a molecular mechanics calculation. So we pick that, and then all we have to do is click Submit. 
and give it a file name so it knew this molecule was ethanol. So we're just going to leave it that file name and the calculation is already done. If you do one of these um, quantum mechanics calculations, you know, it may take it a while to run. It may take it a few seconds, it may take it a few minutes, it may take it hours, it may take it days to run, depends on how big the molecule is. Okay, so it's optimized the geometry, so now we can start looking at features of the molecule. So if we click this here, um, it, this will add surfaces, and then we can go here, add um, electrostatic potential map, and then if we click this checkbox here, then it'll show you the electrostatic potential map for the molecule. So red means areas of high electron density. So obviously that's gonna be the oxygen atom because it's very electronegative. And blue is gonna be areas of low electron density. So that's gonna be, so we can turn this off. So that's the hydrogen attached to the oxygen, right? Because oxygen is very electronegative, it's pulling, sucking all the electron density off of hydrogen making the hydrogen very partial positive. If you notice, notice the other hydrogens in the molecule, right, they're on carbon, and so they're, they're not blue, they're green. Um, so because they don't have much positive charges density on them, uh, but the hydrogen on oxygen has a lot of positive charges density on it. Okay, so we can take that off. Uh, if you play with model, um, you know, you can look at different way, ways to visualize the molecule. I personally like, I like tube quite a bit. I like ball and, uh, I like ball and spoke probably the best. Space filling gives you a perspective of what the molecule really looks like three, in three dimensions. Okay, so what else do we want to do? Uh, if we want to look at the dipole moment, so we can go here, display output. Uh, no, 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 not, not that. That's to look at the actual charge on the atoms. So let's go here to model and turn on labels. Let me move this again so that we, know, so we can see the hydrogen three is the one attached to oxygen. So then if I, click on atomic charges. So C1 has basically no charge on it. C2 has some positive charges density on it. Why does it have positive charges density? Because it's attached to a very electronegative oxygen. So oxygen would be partial negative, right? If we're using these symbols in organic chemistry, that uh, delta plus or po negative, and then this carbon would be delta positive or partial positive. Hydrogens one and two, um, have basically no charge on them. Hydrogen three is the one on oxygen and it is positively charged, which is, should be because oxygen is very electronegative, pulling electron density off of hydrogen. And then hydrogens four, five, and six are also attached to carbon and they're basically no charge. And then oxygen, of course, has negative charge density because it's the most electronegative atom in the molecule. And let's see, so let's turn these labels uh, model, let's turn the labels off, and let's look at the dipole. Uh, so let's see, um, no, I've already forgot. What do I need to look at? Display properties. So then we can see the dipole moment here is 2.25 Dubai. And if we click this button here, then it will show us the direction of the net dipole moment which, um, let's see. Yeah, so oxygen's pulling electron density this way, hydrogen's, and it's pulling electron density this way off of carbon, so yeah, dipole moment should be in that direction. Okay, let's see. Um, so in, in a, a couple of weeks, we're gonna have a, some lectures over spectroscopy. So if we look at this here, so let's close this. Um, let's see. If we go plus and click IR. Well, that's experimental. So that would be the experimental IR spectrum of the molecule. And NMR. So right now these are probably grayed out because we didn't go to a high enough level of theory. If we did set up calculations 
and we went to one of these higher levels of theory. Um, let's just try Hartree Falk right quick. Let's see how long it takes us before it finishes. Maybe it's already done, I don't know. I think it's already done. Yeah, so the numbers and what's displayed here has changed, so I think that calculation's already done. Let's see if we can display the spectra now. Maybe not. Well, we'll have to play with that a little bit. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to look at NMR spectroscopy as well, so that's experimental what the NMR looks like. Uh, but there is a way. Uh, using the software is you can calculate what the spectra should look like. So we'll talk more about that once we get to that material in class. So for now, this is also let me show you some other things that you can do. Uh, so maybe we want to look at bond lengths. Um, so if we go here to let's see geometry, measure distance. So then if we just click on this atom and that atom, then it shows us down here that that oxygen-hydrogen bond length is 0.966 angstroms. <clears throat> um, we've talked about in this lecture, I haven't posted this lecture yet, but I just finished a lecture over um, confirmations of molecules and uh, anti-Gaussian eclipse confirmations. If we wanted to change <clears throat> where, where atoms are at in space, Let's go here to geometry and measure dihedral. So if I click one, two, three, four atoms in sequence, it tells me the dihedral angle is 180 degrees. So basically this hydrogen and that carbon are 180 degrees apart. And let's change this to zero. And now, now we can see that this hydrogen is directly behind that carbon uh, because the angle here is now zero degrees. So if we want to start talking about confirmations of molecules, which is what you're going to have to do soon, um, then if you want to build different confirmations of molecules, you do so by changing the dihedral angle. So if we take this so you can see that that hydrogen is directly behind this carbon, let's set that at 90 degrees. So you can see now that that hydrogen is now 90 degrees to this carbon. So if you want to change a dihedral angle, you had to put, pick four atoms in sequence. So this is when you watch this video over confirmations, you'll see this video over Newman projections. So I would be looking at a Newman projection right now of but down the oxygen carbon bond, and we can see the dihedral angle between this hydrogen and that carbon is 90 degrees. Or if we make it back to 180, then now that hydrogen is 100. And so if we go to a dihedral, to a Newman projection, we can see that hydrogen is 180 degrees from this carbon. Okay, so that's some basic features of Spartan um, that you have to use. Um, well, let's just try to build a second molecule right quick. Let's go back to this build molecule. Let's build a second molecule. Uh, let's see, let's build, and we'll put a double bond oxygen here. So if you don't put anything on the other bonds and it assumes they're hydrogen atoms. And so let's click this molecule and let me, let's see, can I move it by itself? Hmm, I guess we'll have to play with this a little bit more. So it should be possible to move one of these molecules by themselves. But I guess I need to play with the software a little bit more to figure out how to do that. Okay, so I haven't figured out how to move one molecule without the other, but I'll play around with the software a little bit and figure out how to do that.
What I was going to do is see if we could get this hydrogen to hydrogen bond to that oxygen. Let's see what happens if I do a calculation. And equilibrium geometry, we'll do that and see what happens. Oh, it did it. So it put this hydrogen near that oxygen. So obviously this hydrogen's partial positive, that oxygen's partial negative, so they want to be close to each other in space so that they can make a hydrogen bond. So we can go here to geometry, measure distance, click that atom and that atom, and that hydrogen bond distance is 1.724 angstroms. Okay, I'll stop there and um, make another worksheet um, for you to do some calculations with and then I'll make another video if I need to to show you how to do these type of things.